First of all, welcome to Basel. So this is EuroPython 2019. It's the 18th EuroPython conference. So we've come a long, long way. We sold even more tickets than last year. We sold 1,200 tickets for the conference and 300 for the training days. And I'd like to welcome especially the new EuroPythonistas. I had a, an, in the opening session for the training days, I had a call of hands. So please put up your hand if you're new to EuroPython. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, who's a regular? Who's been to EuroPython before? Not that many, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, f for all the regulars, I'd like to ask you to help all the newcomers feel, feel at home at EuroPython, to you know, maybe explain a bit how things work, because ev every year, basically, we do more or less the same thing. Uh, and so, if, if someone needs, needs help, please, please do guide them, please help them and, and, and let them know how, how we do things. For example, what lightning talks are, or what a poster session is, or what open space is. That would be uh, really nice of you, because, you know, this is our conference, and so we want to make it really nice for everyone. I'd also like to say a big thanks to our sponsors. Uh, the sponsor exhibit is out just outside on the second floor. Uh, something that I, I'd like to mention here, because you know you typically just go to a conference, you see all the sponsors, uh, maybe you go to their booths. What you typically don't realize is that the sponsors actually make the tickets affordable. So we'd have to charge you about 200 euros more per ticket if, if it were not for, the, for these companies to help us. So please give them a big hand. And now I'd like to hand over to, to Martin Christen. He's going to tell you a bit about Basel. Welcome to Basel. Welcome to Europe in 2019. I'm actually from Basel. I will tell more about Basel. Uh, actually, in Switzerland, we do have four languages. Um, so German, French, Italian, and this Retro-Romanian language. And Basel, uh, you can speak German, English, French, so it's no problem <laughs> at all. You, you see here the picture of the basilisk, that's a, a dragon or something like a dragon. Um, it, it's a, a symbol of, of Basel and also uh, the name Basel, Basilea, came uh, from, from the Roman. Um, Basel is a very old city, it was founded by Celts 120 BC, so uh, really, really old. They didn't program Python back then, but um, I think they would have if they knew it. And the most important thing in Basel is the River Rhine. It actually separates Basel in two uh, places, the lower and the higher part, or the, the, the um, uh, yeah, lower and higher, I could say. And uh, you will see Basel also has two city centers in, on each side. I think you will enjoy that. Basel is a Python city. I'm actually from the University of Applied Sciences and Arts, North Switzerland. Northwestern Switzerland, that's where the uh, tutorials yesterday and uh, on Monday were happening. Those of you who are there remember that certainly. Um, I'm teaching Python, so many students here, they know Python and they spread the word how cool this language is. I'm also the organizer of Pi Basel, and there is the big GeoPython event every year in Basel. It's about Python and geodata. You could say the Geospatial Data Science with Python conference. And um, there are also new trends um, like Pi Pharma, because Basel is a pharma city, so the pharma industry discovered how important Python is in data science and discovered um, that it is really useful for that. And as I said before, Python in education is very popular in Switzerland. More and more universities switch to Python. It's a, it's a perfect language for many purposes. So I'm giving back the word to Mark. Yes. So yeah, please give a big hand to Martin because he, he actually invested a lot of time getting all this working here in Basel. It was a pleasure. 
it was really a pleasure. I, I like Python. I do everything for Python. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, which brings me to the next slide. Who's making all this happen? It's actually just a very few people. These are essentially the, the main, main organizers. Plus, of course, we have lots and lots of on-site volunteers, uh, the people in the yellow t-shirts who are helping us enormously make this happen. Without the volunteers, we, the on-site volunteers that we have, this wouldn't be possible. All of the people that you see here do this for free. This is all volunteer uh, jobs. This is, no one gets paid for these things. So I think uh, all of these people deserve, deserve a big hand from you as well. Right. Uh, the EuroPython Society is, is running the show, it's, it's running EuroPython. Uh, more recently, we also started to support the Europi European Python community. So if you, for example, run a conference somewhere and you need a grant, you need some money to, to get you started, or you need some other help, maybe organizational help, then uh, please contact us. We, we are very open to, to helping you out. If you want to help us even more, then of course you can, you can earn one of these yellow t-shirts. And uh, for that, you only need to register on the website and to, to become a volunteer. And then please come to the registration desk, and then we can find something for you to do. Or you can go to the volunteer app that we have to register there. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to EuroPython. Especially important is the Wi-Fi information in there, because as you can see, the username is not exactly something you can easily remember. Uh, we've tried to put these you know, pieces of paper around the venues with, with all the data, so hopefully you can get the information from there. If, if not, you can go to the conference app. It has the information as well. And we'd like to encourage you to install the Attendify app. Uh, again, you can go to the website to, uh, to learn how to use that. We have a Telegram channel that's open to the public, so anyone can register. Uh, if you want to, for example, arrange dinner or want, you want to meet some other people uh, then in, the, in the city, then you can coordinate on that channel. You can also post, post images, post videos, and so on there. Just please be uh, aware that this all is subject to our code of conduct. I'm going to get to that later on. So um, you shouldn't post anything that could, could um, you know, make people unhappy. Everything else is at, uh, available at the conference desk. So uh, if you have a question, then you can just go down there and uh, ask them. Uh, I tried to put these maps on, on the slide here. You, they're too small. You can't really see them. Uh, if you have the, the app installed, it has a section with the maps, so you can, you can find out where things are. We also put some signage out, outside, with the, which explains you where the different rooms are. So there are different monitors around the venue which show you things. Essentially, we, have, we are using three floors. We're not using the first floor. We're just using the ground floor. We're using the second floor and the third floor. So actually, I'm not sure. Did you get your bags already? Yes, no, yes, no, OK. <laughs> so um, if you already received your bags, so the people who went to the train days already received the bags, for example. You, you'll have a booklet in there, the conference booklet, which has all the information, it has the program. The program in the booklet, booklet is not uh, really up to date anymore because we made a few changes, but most of the talks should still be uh, fine. Uh, you should have a t-shirt, you should have the official EuroPython PewPew device. Did you get that already? Yeah? Uh, you'll probably also find some sponsor gadgets, coupons, and other sponsor information in there. Uh, coming to the PewPew Pew device, this is it. This is how it looks like. Uh, it's a specially made device for EuroPython. It was designed by Radomir. I don't know whether he's here. Radomir? No. Okay. Um, we had workshops for this, for this device to teach you how to use it. It's programmable in Python. You can do lots of you know, nice stuff with it. You can play games on it. Uh, batteries are included. We have our own Python batteries for these devices. And if you want to read up on how it's used, and you can either go to Radomir and maybe he can help you a bit, or you can go read the documentation there to figure out how it works. So essentially, you just put in the batteries, you turn it on, and it 
starts with uh, showing the Europath, and then you have to press a few buttons to go to the games. Right. Okay, so the official part of the conference, of course, we have lots of talks, we have lots of uh, poster sessions, we have keynotes, and these are our keynotes. We're going to start with Lynn today. As you can see, we have uh, four ladies, one gentleman there. So, diversity-wise, this is, uh, I think, a good selection. Uh, we also have some other events that I want like to I would like to mention. So we already had on the training days all the great ones. Uh, we're going to have the poster session. Uh, I don't know exactly when it is. Maybe today or tomorrow. Then we have a PyData track. So lots of talks in the PyData uh, field. We have a recruitment session for those of you who are looking for a new job. We have an open space where you can arrange talks yourself. We're going to put up a, a, a whiteboard or um, something to to manage this. Uh, we're going to have help desk where teams can, can have registered to, to then show you certain open source projects and help you with any questions that you might have. And of course, on the weekend, we have the sprints and hackathons at the university again. So just a few words about the open spaces. I'm not going to go into detail. Open space essentially is something that you arrange yourself. Uh, the room is called Delphi. It's at the level zero, so ground floor. And similarly, we have the lightning talks. How many of you don't know what a lightning talk is? Excellent, so I don't have to explain. So it's first come, first serve. We're going to have them on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We're going to set up a flip chart, probably near the registration desk, where you can then mark your, uh, your, your talks that you want to uh, give. And then uh, this is all going to be organized by Alexander. Where is Alexander? Alexander. There he is, down there. And so these are usually uh, probably the most exciting part of the conference. So <laughs> these are always fun and, and nice to, to go to. I uh, already mentioned the conference app. I won't go into detail here. The only thing I want to mention is that you can actually rate the, the sessions. So there's, uh, they have the, for, for each session, we have this rating bar in there. Whether it works out this year or not, I don't know. Last year it didn't work out, so maybe, you know. But it's, it's definitely good to, to find the schedule. We're updating it regularly, and it works offline. Then we have a social event on Thursday. Very important, please get your tickets. We, don't, we only have an, a, a fixed number of, of seats. I think 400 we have, right? So uh, if you want to it, go to the, the social event, then uh, please get your ticket in the ticket shop. We're going to have grilled sausages, baked potatoes. We're going to have uh, the ticket includes two drinks, but of course you can buy more. We're going to have a very special Python music session in there. So, what's it called? Les, Les Chemins de Traverse. This is a, a group that's actually using Python to produce music. It's a bit experimental, so it's not the, you know, the stuff that you get in discos, but, um, <laughs> but it's going to be very interesting. We have a quiet room for those of you who want to take a break. It's also uh, at the level zero ground floor. We have a code of conduct, like I mentioned. So the very, very, very short version is be nice to each other, because this is our conference. We want to make it enjoyable for everyone. And be professional and don't spam. This is more geared towards companies attending the conference who are not sponsors, or even the, the companies who are sponsors, but because we don't, want to, we don't want to spam people. If you want to read the full version of the code of conduct, you need to go to our website. The people on the right here, these are the Code of Conduct workgroup members. So if you have any issues, please contact one of these people. It's probably best to contact them personally. If you don't see them, please go to the registration desk and they can then inform us and we will come to the registration desk to sort out any issues that you find. This applies to all the channels that we have, all the social channels, the, of course the conference, but also the social event and anything uh, that happens around the conference. Right, so last slide, speaker guidelines. If you are a speaker, please do test your notebooks before you come to the session. You know, we should have done that as well, but <laughs> we kind of forgot. Um, after your talk, please do upload your slides. And there was one more thing I wanted to say about the catering. We have a special food point to the, when, you, when you exit on the second uh, level to the right from, you know, uh, on that side, so it's the left on your side, for uh, vegetarian food and vegan food. 
and any other diets. I suppose that they can also uh, serve other diets as well. If if you if you want to have food specifically on uh, one of those diets, then please go there. For all the others, I would recommend not going there because otherwise we're going to run out of vegetarian food, and we don't want that. So we have plenty of other food points available to uh, for you to get your food. So that's it. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>